Should LLMs be allowed in coding interviews? Of course not. We want to assess how the software developer thinks, how they solve problems on their own, not with AI helping them cheat, right? Well, I think if you give me a few minutes, I may be able to make a good case as to why LLMs may be allowed in coding interviews in the not so distant future, and for sensical reasons. What's happening now is developers are trying to secretly use them during coding interviews, remote coding interviews, of course, and they're getting busted. How? Well, LLMs are a bit slow, and the awkward pauses while the tokens get generated are a dead giveaway. But what do they ask of us at coding interviews? They ask us to reverse linked lists to get the height of a binary tree, or something like, given a binary tree, write an iterative and recursive solution to traverse the tree using in-order traversal in C++, Java, and Python. And then, after getting the job, we're simply building front-end apps with React. So you've spent 400 hours in leak code so that you can get the job as a web developer. And this has led to many companies instead giving us take-home tests. Build this app or this solution. You have three days to finish. It's a bit more practical and related to what we would be actually doing in our job if we were to get it, right? Well, imagine this. Developers are increasingly adopting a daily use of LLMs. Even in the Stack Overflow survey from last year, 76% of respondents are using or planning to use AI tools in their development process, a 70% increase from the year before. And 72% of respondents are favorable or very favorable of AI tools for development. And as developers get wiser in using it and start seeing the specific benefits that helps them most, they're not then going to ditch it. So adoption is inevitable, and its growth is inevitable. We've opened the can of worms, and it can't be sealed again. So, what if there comes a day where instead of asking you to get the minimum element from a stack, or finding the median in a stream, they instead wanted to see your efficiency in working with and thinking alongside of an LLM. So they would expect a bigger solution from you, like an entire application and environment, say, within one hour. And they would observe how you use the LLM, how you think through your work, and ultimately what you produce within that hour. They can tell immediately if you don't know your stuff because you're relying on the LLM for everything and can't do any yourself. And they can tell immediately if you do know your stuff and your ability to use the LLM effectively to assist you to greater productivity. I think it's very reasonable and I think we're not far from it. In fact, there are some situations that do not have an answer for this, as we'll see. So in this video, I want to work through a very thoughtful article on the subject and then end with some actionable advice if all this were to come to fruition, because you would need to make sure you're equipped. Before we get started though, we need to hear a quick word from the sponsor of today's video, Formation, a platform that offers specialized training and career development for software engineers. It's a very tough economy out there for software developers. We all know that. It's competitive and the interviews you actually land can't be wasted. You must be prepared to give it your 100%. Founded by two ex-meta engineers, Formation is the world's first AI-powered technical interview prep program for experienced software engineers in the US or Canada looking to level up their careers and land better roles at better companies. Formation's program, powered by a patented adaptive learning algorithm, creates an entirely custom learning roadmap for each engineer and gets you ready to reliably pass technical interviews at bar by providing technical mentorship, from top mentors, one-on-one -on -one mock interviews for DSA, system design, and other types of interviews you can expect to be in. In fact, they have targeted specific prep tracks for all of the FANG companies and more. And engineers who prep through formation land jobs at Amazon, Coinbase, Google, and their number one placement is at Meta. And on average, they see a six-figure increase in salary from when they start with formation to when they finish. There's a full page of success stories of engineers who, upon joining formation, have then moved into roles at major tech companies. So if you're serious about taking your career to that next level to finally land that dream role, go and check out Formation. Link below in the description. So the article is titled, AI Killed the Tech Interview. Now what? And I've shared it in my community recently and it generated some thoughtful discussion. And it's written by a Kane Narraway. So shout outs for the thoughtful piece. Let's go ahead and dive in. Absolutely nobody likes the hiring process, not the managers hiring, not the recruitment people, and certainly not the candidates. 
Tech interviews are one of the worst parts of the process and are pretty much universally hated by the people taking them. We've all heard stories of people being asked comp sci questions about big O of N efficiency, only to connect APIs with basic middleware in their day job. The last few years, though, have seen a whole bunch of advancements to counteract the interview process. Most notably, number three here. AI is, of course, the big one. Using apps like GitHub Copilot and Cursor to auto-complete code requires very little skill in hands-on coding. Asking Claude and OpenAI answers to technical questions will usually result in a right answer, and the failure rate is improving rapidly. This is true, by the way. Six months ago, I would have said no way, but we're getting better at writing good prompts and the outputs have become more and more helpful. This doesn't even include the AI implications of resume creation, mass applications, one-way video interviews, and other techniques that have caused a tug of war between employers and employees. Still, in this post, we'll focus squarely on the tech interview. So how has AI affected tech interviews? How are they changing things? What's the future? Let's keep reading here. So tech interview basics. Skip this section if you know the process. Almost every company hiring developers has some variation of the below. So there's the hacker rank, which is usually the first pre-interview screen, and it allows people to code in their own time at home without an interviewer spending their time assessing it. Pass this step to get to the other interviews. So usually there's this pre-interview screen to screen out people who just totally don't know anything, and hacker rank's very popular. If you pass that, you move on to the comp sci fundamentals. If you've passed that, you head into the coding interview. And if you pass that, you may have another round in architecture and design. That's usually the process. But how has AI affected all of this? So AI straight up kills hacker rank. The only thing that is a filter for now is if you have the know-how to use AI and prompt correctly. That can be useful, but hacker rank will need to adapt somehow. If it can't, I can't see it being used at all in five years. So any pre-interviews, online pre-assessments, developers can completely use LLMs to solve all of this without anyone knowing. Separate computer at my desk, my cell phone AI app, whatever, there is no solution here. AI also significantly reduces the effectiveness of comp sci fundamentals and the coding interview as they are today. The problems are too simple and an LLM can quickly answer them in most cases. Architectural interviews are likely safe for a few years yet. From talking to people who have run these, it's evident that someone is using AI. They often stop with long pauses, do not quite explain things succinctly, and do not understand the questions well enough to prompt the correct answer. As AI gets better and faster, this will likely follow the same fate as the rest, but I would give it some years yet. So when it comes to hacker rank, any kind of pre-screen interview, and then basic computer science fundamentals, if your interview is remote, you can have an LLM open and you can easily generate the answers. So what are our options then? So we can stop remote tech interviews. Using AI when an interviewer is looking over your shoulder is extremely difficult. This could be an in-person coding interview assuming they pass all the rest. So we could just stop remote tech interviews overall, or we could require some Pearson View type spyware. If you've ever taken a professional certification, you know what I mean. Some software that you install gives the interviewer full access while they watch you with a camera. So that's another option. option Option number three, we bury our heads in the sand. This is kind of like what Anthropic did recently. Use their AI, but we ask that in our interviews, you don't use the AI. Kind of ironic. We ask people pretty pleased not to use AI on coding tests. The moral ones who actually don't get worse scores than the ones who do, and we end up hiring the wrong candidates. Fourth, we can change our interviews to allow AI. So we start testing prompting and refactoring rather than testing coding ability. Can someone program LLMs to get the outcomes they want during an interview? This is a huge shift change and would be uncharted territory. As we encourage more people to use IDEs like Cursor, this is likely more the skills we are looking for though. This is a huge hiring risk in the short term as we still need strong coding ability to correct the AI's failures. So fourth, we change our interviews to allow AI. Instead of testing coding ability, we start testing prompting and refactoring. And then fifth, there's a hybrid approach. Mixing some of the options above, we do remote architectural and coding interviews, could even be one-way hacker rank style, that test a mix of prompting and coding ability. Assuming the candidate passes this, they might travel to the office for an in-person coding interview. So fifth, a hybrid approach. So based on these five, these are our five options. He says here, option four and five are likely the only answers in the long term. 
that is to change your interviews to allow AI or create some hybrid approach. That's really the only answers long term. A lot of companies are doing return to office, but even companies that are 100% in office still interview candidates from other cities. Spending money to fly every candidate out without an aggressive pre-screen is too wasteful. One of the things we can do, however, is change the nature of the interviews themselves. This is kind of what I'm getting at here, and I'd love to hear your thoughts below on the subject, so be sure to leave a comment. Coding interviews today are quite basic, anywhere from FizzBuzz to building a calculator. With AI assistance, we could expand this 10x and have people build complete applications. I think a single longer interview, two hours, that mixes architecture and coding will probably be the way to go. Build an application, scale it, and add functions as the interviewer requires. A longer interview will be required to ensure consistency across the code base as it develops and goes into deeper questions rather than focusing on surface level stuff. This way you can evaluate and I thought these questions were helpful. Can the person cope with basic Git and IDE usage? Can they prompt the LLM effectively and potentially program the LLM to give better outputs? Can they understand the code well enough to glue LLM outputs together and make manual edits without making the code a total unreadable mess? Can they be consistent over time with the delivery? And can they build something of a reasonable size and scale within a limited time frame? These are great questions, and I think they still evaluate a candidate's ability to do the job, to be the person they are looking for with a real skill set, but a skill set that also includes modern LLMs. So, what's his summary here? Regardless, the nature of interviews will change drastically in the next few years. They have to. Right now, it's fairly obvious when someone is using AI because it's slow. It gives very to the point answers and you can ask particular edge cases to test the candidate. That won't last though. We see how fast Grok 3 is. Until then, I think we see the following. Two things. Number one, more people pass interviews than get exited during their probation period. An LLM can help you pass an interview, but can't help you be good at your job. Dealing with incidents, technical designs, and consistent communication is a whole different thing. And this plays in with my last video talking about how as developers get more senior, they actually do less coding and the LLMs become essentially less and less effective or less and less helpful for them. Number two, interns, grads, and junior engineers will have an even greater chasm to cross. The reality is that you need senior engineering skills as soon as possible and universities do not teach them. So based on this, here are a few applications. Number one, regarding interns, grads, and junior engineers having an even greater chasm to cross, first things first, you have to learn the material. If you want to do web dev, you have to learn web dev technology, including JavaScript and all that. If you want to do cloud computing, you have to learn cloud concepts in a language like Python. There is no shortcut and you have to really want it in this economy to succeed. For more specifics on that, please check out this video above. Next, you have to be very careful with AI. Do not let it drive you, but you drive it. Use it to teach you conceptual things faster. Say you're learning OOP, Object Oriented Programming. Ask it to give you a high level overview with examples, not of the specific language you're learning, but just neutrally. Or say you're learning how to cache with Redis. First, ask the LLM to explain Redis to you at a high level conceptually. Understand the technology first, then get specific. In using an LLM carefully to get concepts, I think one can learn faster and perhaps cross that chasm the author speaks of faster as well. Number two, given this potential future where we may have LLMs being used in coding interviews and tech interviews, don't you think it's very important to at least start working with and adapting to using LLMs in a way that helps you in your specific work? First of all, you can't ignore it any longer and choose not to use it you will fall behind. Second, if it isn't helpful at all to you, then perhaps you need to change your approach. Work on your prompting, or find out how to use it in a different way to find some kind of value in it, even if only on tasks you hate doing. There is some way an LLM is useful to you. It took me a while, but now I find a lot of value in using one daily. And if I continue to do this, and I end up in a coding interview six months from now, then I'll be able to demonstrate that I can use one effectively and perform the tasks asked of me with an LLM. You want to be equipped with a good equalizer. Others are using this modern tool to work faster and more effectively. You also should add it to your tool belt. You may just find with some experimentation that LLMs can help with many of the tasks you perform on a regular basis. What do you think? Is this a real possibility soon? Let me know your thoughts below. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, consider doing so. 
and I'll see you in the next video.